Hey guys. What's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tin. I'm Brian. This is All Start coming back to you guys again for another video. Yeah. Um, today, it's, this is something I've never really heard of, but Brian enlightened me on this. Uh, it's a company called Aptera. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, Tim was talking about, you know, it'd be a great idea if company, EV companies start having solar power vehicles. And then that, I remember seeing it somewhere and looking at a little, little bit into it. Mm -hmm. um, a vehicle that has like solar panels on top, basically. Okay. And can like provide some solar charging. So yeah, that's how this was found, Aptera. It's definitely a different concept compared to your typical traditional EVs. So let's explore it today. Oh yeah. Oh. So to begin, this is not your typical electric vehicle. Okay, this is <laughs> a three-wheeler. So this is considered technically a cycle. Mm -hmm. So it's not an actual four-door car. It's really strange looking but it kind of makes sense in what they're trying to go for um but yeah this this thing looks so different yeah it's like so dramatically different than anything you've really ever seen i mean i'm sure you've seen those slingshots slingshot, yeah mm -hmm. but this is like another version of the slingshot just imagine two wheels in the front and the wheel on the back that is the aptera yep i would say like i'm thinking like kind of like a bubble version kind of like buggy kind of I thought like yeah, an okay. insect kind of in a way I don't know why but I got like insect kind of vibe from it I don't for some reason kind of, kind of looks like a little bit of insect stuff to it yeah what's really interesting is like this car looks futuristic right this car looks like something yeah. you would see us like flying possibly really yeah I mean in my opinion the Elif should look like this probably yeah. it, it looks <laughs> this car looks like it, it can almost just take off yeah it looks yeah, it looks like something that's in the air or something like like I said, like a flying bug. If it had wings, like the wings on the that's side it, of it, that's it. It's a bug. That's what I'm thinking. It's in the air. I mean, it looks like something that came out like straight from the Jetsons. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> ah. So it's it's really cool. I mean, it, like I said, it's not your traditional, typical EV. It's uh, you know, very uh, shaped in a very specific teardrop way to really uh, minimize that drag coefficient to make it like slide and glide through the air a lot easier. So, you know, it goes with their way of trying to make it all fully solar powered right, and right. You, know, you don't really have to charge it. That's kind of their thing. You, a car that you don't have to plug in and charge. Makes sense. Yeah. Keeping it and driving it out during the day and mm -hmm. the sun providing that charging back to it. Right. Indeed. Makes sense. So let's go with the that, that charging first. So the charging, it's actually from head to toe all the way on the top of the car is covered in solar panels. But. So <laughs> you can drive it to work, park it in the sun. And then it, it charges. Broken. So it, <laughs> the car really incentivizes you to really be in the sun. In the sun. Yeah. True. True. I mean, yeah, I understand people like to maybe be in like the garage in the shade, right? Yep. You don't want to have the heat. Really, if you think about it, mm -hmm. if you're like, as long as you're potentially having features like, uh, you know, starting the vehicle, um, you know, remotely and when you're inside, be like True. 10 or 15 minutes before, let, let it cool down, it's really okay. Very strange looking car. It, it comes with butterfly or angel wing doors. Right, right. Too, so. It definitely has a more like dramatic look to it. Definitely. When you step out of it, very exaggerated. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but the body itself is supposed to be made with like these ultra light uh, composites and it's supposed to be strong and also super light. So that's how it keeps this car, you know, more efficient. So besides having that really, this weird, you know, you know, exterior, let's go into like a very simple interior. Yeah completely contrast the exterior part so the interior you can only get all white all white? it's all white interior there we go that's it <laughs> that's it that's what you get and you can have some customization to it but the only thing that changes is just the accent it really is just like the console color and your seatbelt color and then some stitching on like the seating but that that's all the color changes probably trying <laughs> to like um, minimize the amount of heat that is absorbed by the car Ah, okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's a good. One I mean, we're gonna it's leave gonna this car in the sun. sun. It's gonna be hot, so the, the white colors. kind of re reflects a lot of that heat. Ah, so yeah. So it hopes to minimize any like heat stuff inside the car as you leave it. Makes sense. Okay. Some other cool stuff too. It comes with a very large 15-inch center infotainment system, and a driver display as well with a yoke steering. It has like a left, only a left stop. Only a left. Just a left stop, not a right stop, but right. left stop. You can have a left. <laughs> so you have your blinkers and your windshield wipers and your high beams, but nothing on the right. And nothing on the right. Nothing on the right. But yeah, I mean, this, the uh, interior is very simple. It's a two-seater. Yep. So you won't be carrying a family in this car. Nope. <laughs> but it does have some trunk, though, which is very interesting. 
has trunk, trunk space. Trunk space. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Large enough. Like a decent sized trunk space. So let's move on <laughs> to the specs. So this car is definitely something else in the spec territory. Yes, for sure. <laughs> 250 miles uh, of battery. 400 miles of range. 600. The piece of resistance, the one they advertise like at the main front of the website, 1,000 miles battery. So the bigger the range, the bigger the battery, the heavier it is. The heavier the vehicle too, yeah. So that's going to also going to should yeah, worry so, about the efficiency too of the vehicle. Yeah, to me, a 1,000 miles of range is way too overkill for any <laughs> normal, actually for everyone. No one really, should yeah. require 1,000 miles. The only person that requires 1,000 miles are truck drivers, delivery drivers. Yeah. Those people that are, like haul a lot of loads. I mean, like the four to six hundred. I think there should you should be okay. You, you should, should be. be fine. Especially this is only a two seater, so it's the world's like not heaviest car. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, the efficiency of it too, right? So like, if it's something that's like, oh, you it'd be different if it's like, oh, I need that thousand because it's like yeah. so inefficient. Right. Well, let's go into these solar panels where I don't even know why they just well, why they even offer all these options, right? So they that's offer a, a <laughs> <laughs> so they offer a the solar panels from head to toe. But they offer you to be able to configure where you want your solar panels. Mm. Why? Why, why, why just not just get rid of everything and just make it a base price point and just have like uh, solar panels head to toe standard? I mean, this is a solar powered car, so I feel like people want to maximize that solar efficiency, so they just get solar panels everywhere regardless. Right. Interesting. But depending on your solar configuration, you can get up to you can get 16, 22, 34, or even maximum 40 miles of solar charging a day. Okay. And they, they do say typically the average American doesn't drive more than 40-ish miles in a single okay. day. Okay. So even then, I would still just maximize the solar panels just for efficiency, regardless. Right. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I, if I have the option, I want them everywhere. Put them everywhere you can. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole purpose of this car, they're trying to advertise a car that you won't have to plug in to charge, but they still do have a charger right. port, right, just right. in case anything were to go wrong. And they oh. are tr attempting to use the Tesla's standard US charger now. This comes standard as front wheel drive. You can have, bump it up to an all wheel drive okay. if you okay. really want that extra performance. Nice speed specs, a zero to 60 in four seconds or a zero to 60 in six seconds, depending on your all wheel drive, you can pick that one. There's still zooms. Which is cool. Top speed of 101 miles an hour. Okay. So, for a two-seater, I think that's pretty fast. So, let's go back to that exterior on that weird teardrop look. So, yeah. the whole, so the whole teardrop look is for that drag coefficient, right? Sounds so, this car boasters a low whopping drag coefficient of 0 0.13. That's extremely low. Let, let me give you some comparison numbers, right? The Lucid we talked about was 0 0.21. The Model 3 is 0 0.23. And the Model S is 0 0.208, right? So it is a very low drive coefficient car. I don't know if you guys heard of this one, but it's called the Mercedes EQXX. It's supposed to be a Mercedes like vision concept, whatever. It, it bolsters a, a drag coefficient of 0 0.17. And the way they're trying to like, like uh, minimize the weight even more, it is there's no grill, there's no radiator, and there's no fan cooling. Of course, of course. So I'm afraid of the no fan cooling because how are you gonna cool the battery? You can take this, the Nissan Leaf, first generation Nissan Leafs, for example. Uh, when Nissan first produced the Leafs, they only considered passive cooling. So when you're driving the car and you know, it intakes the air through the vents, that's considered passive cooling. Mm. And But it failed because there's no actual battery cooling for the car, so eventually the battery just kept degrading. Ooh. So it wasn't good. Ooh. And that's the problem. Like, I'm thinking with this car, maybe the battery isn't going to be the greatest in the world because of that degradation. There's nothing, there's no active fan cooling to cool the car. The way they're attempting to mitigate this heat, is they're incorporating this really weird, I've never heard of this tech in my life, <laughs> but it's called microfluidic channels. So they're, they're trying to put stuff into like the belly and the sides of the car to like, like emanate that heat like an animal would like, uh, cool off like their skin interesting yes i don't know about you but when i'm sweating and i'm still in the sun it's still hot fair so I don't, I don't care how much i sweat i'm still gonna be hot yeah i don't know what uh tech they're using the ah uh, yes this is the wakanda tech right <laughs> wakanda. <laughs> yeah i was like what maybe they have the vibranium or something we don't know what they got in there let's talk about pricing gotta okay. talk about the price baby so it's actually very 
for yeah. what it is. For a two seater, like EV, solar power, two seater, whatever, mm. base model costs you $26,000. That is cheaper than a Model 3. That's very cheap. You're getting a solar EV? Mm -hmm. Sounds brokenly cheap, actually. Like, what? Oh. It, <laughs> just so you want to like, completely spec it out, max it out with all the possible convicts and everything, mm -hmm. you get up there to about $48,000. Not so, bad at all. Still not bad. That gets you a thousand miles of range. A thousand miles. More than you'll ever need. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They'll get the solar panels head to toe. So, yeah. for a car a little less than fifty thousand dollars, you it, it, it depends what your priorities are, right? Do you have a family? This might not be the car for you. This car is not in production yet. It is still, you know, in testing phase, development phase. They have reservations available. It is a yep. one hundred dollar refundable down deposit if you want to get on that waiting list of two thousand people. Whew. So as of recording, a little over six hundred people left. Okay. For available spots. For the reservation. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Hot dang. Yeah. It's uh, definitely going to be some time for sure. I know I saw that in some of their little community posts. There, Some people seeing the, the dates started changing, you know, for the reservations. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they, I think, maybe some of it initially had said like 2023, late 2023, and then it got pushed mm -hmm. back now like more to 2020, I think five or six or something maybe now or something. It's got, it's getting, keeps getting pushed back. Right. So, I mean, like I said, Said definitely could be somewhere about that cooling they're still working on and tweaking on, but uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely interesting. <laughs> but let's talk about our configurations, all right? Oh, yeah, so if I were to ever get one of these vehicles, I would probably get a black. I think black looks great. Yeah, I mean, if they ever figure out that cooling issue, back black might be the way to go. Oh, yeah, for sure. 400 miles of range, pa solar panels everywhere, uh, all wheel drive, and a blue accent interior that would roughly cost me about thirty three thousand of change not bad not bad yeah so it's very doable yeah hey I, i'd be like pretty similar specs you know 400 miles range is definitely good <laughs> more than for should be good uh in a red color i would love it you know if red's available um and red accents inside you know love my red brings me to all-wheel drive and puts me around thirty four thousand seven hundred. so not bad not bad at all yeah so still very inexpensive. I mean, it's cheaper than the Model 3, like I said. It's cheaper than some, like, Corollas and Camrys, if you would expect those out. It's, it's not too bad for, like, a three-wheel car. Not bad, not bad at all. So, some things of note before you guys decide to drop that money and be an investor or be on the reserve list. They were found in 2005, and in 2008, they got about 4,000 4, people to... Put some deposits down but unfortunately they also liquidated in 2011 Ooh. so just be warned this is not their their first rodeo or they've done they've done this before mm. yeah. and be careful it only this company only restarted due to a crowdfunding campaign mm. so take that into consideration interesting interesting that is interesting i mean makes sense why you're asking for investments too like yes. not just your <laughs> deposit of a hundred dollars there oh no you're could... saying oh you want to get it earlier Yep, we have that uh, little public investment list, and you can see who's at the top by how much they've invested, and who's like what order they are in. And boy, to be on the top of that list, you have to donate quite a bit of money to get to the top. <laughs> Definitely interesting vehicle. Oh, it is. It's, I mean, I haven't really seen anyone try to do it like they did. So yeah, I think it's cool. Looks super neat. Definitely a brave attempt, and like I said, interested for sure. Potential to see as it comes out. You know, oh, me. Indeed. I mean, technically, as of today, I love my, you know, two-seaters. I, I enjoy this. So this one, And it's very cheap. So the price is very good, you know. But we need to see what happens when it's out on the road. Indeed. Production. Do people have this? How do people like it? Those kind of things. Um, oh, boy. But till next time, make sure you guys are subscribed to see any weird updates about Aptera. Make sure you give yeah. the video a like. Leave some comments down below. Yeah. Let us know. Are you guys on the reserve list? Are you guys hyped for Aptera? Are you guys... <laughs> not interested don't care about these three wheelers yeah 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 let us know any of those uh any other cool vehicles you've seen out there you know take care see you guys All in right. the next one bye, bye.